So continuing on from last week's story, I'm going to give you another example of being creative with limited tools. Um, so I mentioned I had a DOS-based machine growing up uh, in the uh, mid to late 80s, and I actually had that well into the 90s. But while still in the 80s and living in New York, I would go over to my uncle's house occasionally, and he had a Windows 3.1 machine, which was awesome because it had... Uh, Microsoft Paint or Paintbrush as it was known back then uh, and I still refer to it um, which I guess they're just killing off now this year 2017 um, but at the time that was amazing because again uh, all I had at home was uh, Printmaster uh, DOS uh, program that was strictly black and white not even grayscale uh, drawing with big blocks uh, so Paintbrush was amazing to have any type of color uh, and it had a good uh, palette of colors, even though a lot of them were not really colors. They were actually just uh, two colors alternating in pixels. Um, but I could draw circles without, you know, everything uh, in Printmaster was drawn square by square. Where here I could draw lines, I could draw circles, and a paintbrush that I could brush with. I had the, the airbrush tool, which was horrible back then. It was just like spraying pixels, um, large pixels. But one of the things I would love to do, again, that uh, would blow people's minds, even though it was just such a simple concept, was I would draw a very simple background, a sky, ground, maybe some buildings, and a road. Then I would scroll over a little bit out of the way of my scene and draw a car. Then I would take the cut tool and you can cut around the car. And then I would say cut and paste, and you could drag that around for a while before you dropped it where you wanted to paste it, and the background would be transparent there. So I would show people I could drive this car around the screen. Uh, and, and again, it's such a simple concept, but it blew people's minds uh, well into like when I was in middle school and, and, and in some computer classes, and I would do that still, and people were like, oh, how'd you do that? How are you doing that? I didn't know that paintbrush could, could do animations. Well, it can't. I'm just copying and pasting something and I haven't dropped it to be pasted yet. I'm just dragging it around. But again, it's something so simple. And again, I'm just trying to point out that uh, lots of times people will, you know, pick apart different softwares and, and, and blame different software. Oh, this can't do that. It's like, well, part of computer use, part of life is being creative. And um, we're all creative in our own ways. And I find that a lot of people uh, put themselves down uh, with their creativity and with their knowledge on stuff. And in general, with computers, uh, people, so many people, oh, I don't know anything computers. I'm not good with computers. It's like people go in with that attitude. Uh, and I think it's just society has ingrained it in people's brains that you're not good with computers. And now I'm not talking about, you know, computer programming. When it comes to computer programming, uh, there is a type of person who is just intrigued by computers and they want to learn and so they want to learn programming but basic computer use um, is is not difficult but people go in thinking it's difficult it's never learn it's like most computer uses is is clicking a button or typing something out which is not hard to do anybody can do it but people go in with this mindset that oh it's so difficult I can't do it and and in reality you can it's just there is a lot when it comes to computer use and you get overwhelmed with it, again, narrow down what you want to learn, what you're interested in. And uh, I'll give you an example. My father-in-law once was talking to me, and he said, I've decided that uh, there's no such thing as someone who's good with computers. And I'm like, really? So why is that? And he goes, uh, because I talk to so many different people, and they, they all know different things. And he goes, for example, I'm really good with, uh, with Excel. I'm probably better than Excel with you. I'm like, you're probably right, because I, I barely use spreadsheets as is, let alone Excel. I go... But you're talking about computer use, and and I think that's another big thing is people get uh, uh, people think they're good computer users makes them a good computer person, and I'm probably going to be insulting some people out in the audience, uh, some of the viewers out there now. Um, but just because you know how to use a piece of software doesn't mean that you're a computer guru. Uh, but there's an understanding of computers uh, when it comes to programming, uh, and to me, you're either a programmer. Or you're just a computer user and the difference is a computer user can do what the computer allows them to do already where a computer programmer can make the computer do whatever they want um, and not everyone is needs to be a computer programmer and that's what i get out people it's like they think that like oh it's got a com computer uh to be good with computers uh using computers i've got to be a computer programmer no it's like you just learn what you need to do but people uh will 
will get confused. It's, it's like you're using your email application and they expect me to like, oh, oh, you're a computer guy. You know, I know I, I don't use Outlook. I don't know how Outlook works. You use it every day. You know more than I do on it. Um, but going back to the, my first week on stories is don't be afraid to use the programs you have. Uh, someone asked me to do something with their Outlook program. I'm just going to click through the menus till I find the option I'm looking for. I have no clue how Outlook works. I haven't used Outlook since Outlook Express in the 90s, and I barely used it back then. You, uh, person asking me who uses Outlook every day, knows more about Outlook than I do, uh, but you're afraid of the computer. Don't be afraid of it. Use it and be creative with it. So again, I thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day.